of vlogmas is going to be a work day in my life a very typical early in the week day in my life it's currently tuesday and yesterday i didn't get good sleep and i was pretty miserable all day from the lack of sleep because i was up late sunday editing the last episode of vlogmas because i wanted to get it kind of done and out of the way and I didn't want to come home from work and have to think about it and, and edit it and finish it. So later on now, as I reflect, it was worth the pain, but I made sure to prioritize self-care last night and I went to bed. Well, I went literally into my bed at 10 p.m. and didn't fall asleep as early as I wanted because I got caught up in watching a, an old episode of True Life. So if you, no true life on mtv like that was my like teenage era and i love documentaries and seeing true lives of of people in their 20s so there are like old episodes on hulu that i discovered and i just wanted to watch one so i watched one and it kept me up till 11 30 but alas i feel like I've gotten more sleep at least than the night before. I also read a very good chunk of The Cloisters, over 100 pages last night, like over the course of three hours, I would say. And I have about 50 pages left and it's gotten really, really juicy, really good. I'm really keen to see how the ending is and I, I would have probably stayed up as late as I could last night if I wasn't trying to go to bed early because I want to know what happens. Um, so this book's been really, really good so far and I'm going to try and finish it today, tonight. We'll see how that goes with <laughs> filming and everything, but I'm going to take it to work and try and read a few chapters on my lunch break. Today's agenda is work. <laughs> I need to meal prep when I get home. I usually meal prep either Sunday or Mondays, but since Sunday and Monday have been kind of out of routine. I am going to be meal prepping some stir fry tonight. So we'll do that. And then I'm just gonna read and have a cozy evening in. Nothing too exciting. Again, typical day. And as you guys know, I work as a full-time archivist. So I'll take you into the archives for a work day today. Yesterday was also kind of busy for a Monday, but I, I don't hate that. I like, speeding through my Mondays because that's like one one day down like four more to go and then Tuesdays Wednesdays I kind of chill out and focus on my projects so I have a lot of tasks and projects I need to work on as I always do there are lots of sounds going on in the background apologies for that but anyway let's go to work because I am technically going to be a few minutes <laughs> later than I expected but it's fine it's vlogmas I don't have to be in at a certain time today. No appointments like yesterday and I'm ready to go to work. It's also raining. It's very rainy and gloomy, this, this, this fog mess. I wish it was snow. <laughs> I really do. <laughs>
large box tutorial. Get two what you think are large textile boxes, which I don't remember the size. I think they were like 40 by 18 inches. So this is made out of three 40 by 18 inch textile boxes. I'm trying to, think, cause this is one box. Then we had another box that we like somehow, I should have gotten a video of us inserting it to remember, but then they connect. This part is another box that was flipped. Yes, we're just trimming because we aren't totally quick and dirty around here and tape to adhese it because tape is better than glue. <laughs> I mean, neither is great, but just some, some packing tape and to be continued on the lid. I'll just leave it here for a joke for Linda. So the good news is we constructed this box. It came out great. The bad news is we did not make it wide enough because the banner that we're putting into the box has a long rod at the top of it. And I completely forgot to factor in the length of the rod. I just had the length of the banner itself and the rod, the banner is like 35 inches wide and the rod is 40 inches. And the box was literally, no, the, I think the rod was like 42 inches or 40, I don't know. But the box was just like a few inches too short. So we're gonna have to make an entirely new box tomorrow. <laughs> so my reaction, you can probably guess what my reaction was, but alas, you learn from your mistakes and you move on. <laughs> end of the work day I am about to leave current state of my desk is midweek chaos I've been I haven't had a chance to like write all my to do's down so I finally took some time to just sit and like brain brain dump all the lingering tasks that are living in my head and I need to get them out of my head because last week I think the past two weeks since moving I haven't really had a like a to, like a weekly to-do list here. I've just been kind of <laughs> dealing with things as they come up. So I, I function better when I have a list because I've been forgetting to do things and then they get behind and yada, yada, yada. So cheers to a to-do list. But now I need to actually make a target run because we need more packaging tape <laughs> so we can construct our box, our oversized textile box tomorrow because we have to make a new one. And that's just how 
the cards were dealt for me. So cheers to another Target run, Target montage. And then I'm gonna go home, meal prep, make dinner, finish the cloisters. I'm so excited. I have 25 pages left, I think. I'm just so excited to see how it ends. I, I'm really loving that book so far, so. You guys, I just finished the cloisters and it was amazing. <laughs> I loved it so much. The ending was so good. Like at first, I had to reread the ending like three times because I didn't understand what was happening. And wow, so good. <laughs> so I'm gonna like sit on my thoughts on the book, absorb process and come back to you tomorrow with a overview, review, my feelings, thoughts on it because I do have thoughts beyond the like <laughs> hypnotism that I am currently experiencing from just my feelings over the book itself as a reader, as a archivist, history person. 
and just like workplace things, I have lots of comments on this um, that I definitely want to share. So I think I'm gonna share those tomorrow after I have time to sit and process. So good night friends, I will see you in the morning. All right friends, it's me, a mirror. 24 hours later, I've fully processed, sat on my feelings and I'm ready to share. Yay. I still feel the same way. I love this book. Five out of five stars. And recap on our plot line. So it's about a girl named Anne who becomes an curatorial assistant at a museum in New York City, The Cloisters, which has like this garden and a lot of medieval artwork. And she comes in contact with staff members there, as one would when they go to work <laughs> at a place. But she enters toxic relationships and there are secrets amongst her clique, I guess would be the best way to put it. So while at this new job, she joins the team led by this curator who is trying to do some research into medieval tarot to prove that during the Renaissance, people used tarot to predict the future. Divination, very interesting things. I love tarot and spirituality and the intersection of that with history and especially the medieval period. So my interest was already piqued. I had very high expectations for the plot and how it was played out in the book. And I will say my expectations were met and exceeded. When Anne discovers a breakthrough in the form of a cryptic deck of 15th century tarot cards, she finds herself at the center of a dangerous game of power, seduction, and ambition. As their circle reaches its breaking point, Anne must decide if the tarot cards can teach her not only about the past, but also about her future. Dun dun dun. There were quite a bit of twists and turns, things I didn't guess, definitely didn't see the ending coming. There was some things I speculated about and ended up being true, but it was still like a fun, engaging, page turning read for me. Definitely classify this as like a mystery, it has little bit elements of thriller in it as well. And obviously the intersection between the museum world, tarot, history, research, and just being a human being and having feelings and relationships and toxic relationships and trying to navigate people you form connections with at work and how that all plays out. So with my like archivist background and lens and working in the public history field and what I have experienced, I would definitely say what Anne went through in this book is nothing I, I personally would ever want to experience in my entire life. It definitely made for an interesting and engaging novel fiction and for any books that are written about librarians, archivists, I guess museum professionals, anybody that kind of falls into that line, like how do you make that interesting, engaging, and entertaining for people who are not, don't really understand that world and they're trying to read a story about a character who has this as their background but still wants to be entertained and it seems like from the very few books that I've read that you have to add the drama, you have to add in the mystery, you have to add in the potential for things to go wrong, the toxic relationships, the toxic workplace. There is definitely a lot of drama in this book so as I'm reading through it I'm like trying to like imagine this happening in the real world and I think like at the level of the museum that she was working at. Definitely higher tier than where I work. I work at a very small archives with a very small staff. Generally speaking, it's only like me, my assistant on a day-to-day -day basis and a few other workers and my boss a few times a week. And our character is working in a huge museum with like departments and there's connections to the Met, the Metropolitan of New York. And when you get into these worlds, from my perspective at least, you're getting into like interesting, borderline toxic and corporate uh, territory. Cause I work for a nonprofit and from reading articles and seeing how these big institutions treat their workers and hearing experiences from other people in comparison to my experience working for a very small archives for a nonprofit, I've always felt cared for and like respect and respected like in my position. So. I am definitely cautious of ever working at a big institution for many reasons, especially at a corporate for-profit level. So 
I'm bringing like that into my lens and perspective when I'm reading this and that is definitely kind of the environment our character Anne was in. And there's also another element of like hustling and taking risks to get where you want in your career. And you see this especially in my field or especially, I guess the museum field because museums have this like not even a hint, a very overt elitism to it, especially if you get into the bigger museums like the ones that are featured in this book. But even at a, at a smaller level, even like kind of at the level I'm at, I also work at a very small local historical society that has a museum, but museums operate on getting donors, donors for money, donors for uh, the material and the objects they collect. So you have to know people with deep pockets in order to have funding to operate your museum, archives, whatever. And if you're a professional in this field, it is very hard to find a job because there is so much competition, very small amount of jobs available. Plus, there's even the element of nepotism and elitism and classism and you have to know somebody who knows somebody to even get an interview. So our character Anne, like she's from Wisconsin and she goes to New York with this goal, with this dream, this ambition, and she's willing to do anything it takes to advance her career. That ambition and that like drive really drives the plot <laughs> in this book. And like that really parallels with the real world, like in terms of if I was trying to go for a really competitive, high paying job at a top archives or museum, I would ask myself, what am I willing to do to actually land this job, climb the ladder, hustle and I have to probably network. I have to, you know, put on a mask. So there's like definitely, definitely dark sides to working <laughs> in the museum field, archives field. I do not have any personal experiences, but just from, again, what I have read, seen, articles, and I guess also being around other professionals because I've, got, I've been to conferences and I've been to round table discussions and I've been in rooms with other people who work at bigger institutions than me. So just bringing that all to the table, I can definitely say that there is, you really have to, you know, put yourself out there and take the risk to get the job that you want. Continuing this conversation, because this is something I've always wanted to talk about, but really haven't had kind of the platform or kick or kind of the right prompt to get me going. But going back to this whole like elitism and classism thing within our field, I say our field as in just like public history, museum, archives, that whole kind of <laughs> grouping of people. There is this elitism that is like so prevalent and I am trying, I am like try doing my best to try and dismantle it for my own sake and sharing my perspective and my experience and bringing topics up like this because again with the competition and trying to get the job. You either have to know somebody, you have to be rich, your family donates money to the school. Like everybody in these positions have either worked really hard to get there, but they have some kind of like background or privilege that kind of got them a step ahead of the next person. I know I have my own privileges and I've been very lucky and fortunate in my academics and, and schooling and career, but there are so many other people who have so many more higher privileges than me in that they have gotten to where they are because of those privileges and I feel at least that I will never get to that level because of the privileges they have that I do not have. So it's this like constant game of comparing yourself to others, privilege, looking down on others, <laughs> Like, why can't we just all be like very open and welcoming? This is just a a note to institutions. The institutions need to do a better job at being diverse, inclusive, and welcoming to people who aren't part of this spectrum of people with the privilege who their parents donate money or those things that like automatically get you the interview and then they just like you and hire you because you're already kind of in the community versus somebody who has all the credentials on paper, but like no nobody cares about them. I feel like I'm on a rant now and I don't have like structured thoughts. I'm just like throwing, I'm just spitballing things. And as much as I 
<laughs> and very passionate about what I'm saying and um, to a degree confident in what I'm saying. I also have hesitancy because I don't know who can follow on this video, who's going to hear what I say, disagree, or totally say I'm like left field and like that's not actually how it is. You know, all this like imposter syndrome and insecurity and anxious thoughts, those are things that I'm definitely like <laughs> trying to reel back, but also trying to be open and sharing and talking about this stuff because it is very important and on my heart and like things I would definitely talk about in a closed room with my friends with colleagues I would feel more comfortable on that level but like on a public platform on YouTube in a public video anybody could see there is a degree of worry and anxiety of the wrong person seeing this but I love to hear your guys' thoughts if you have any like specific questions to to kind of prompt me to to get better uh, thoughts and talking points about this subject, please load them down below. In conclusion, I love this book. I recommend it. If you guys generally enjoy the types of books I read, you like a good contemporary fiction with mystery, and you think the intersection of the museum world and tarot is interesting, check this book out. I mean, even at the back of the book, there's a whole kind of chart about tarot. So. There's just, there's just interesting things. I love this book. That's all I have to say. Thank you guys for tuning in for this episode of Vlogmas and I will see you in the next video. Bye.